thinking for yourself and having your own intuition is the biggest threat for the governments, is the biggest threat for the establishment. And that is why they are trying to eliminate uh, those people that are thinking for themselves and critical thinkers. And now there's a new phase of using mental illness in their advantage. And we better get ready for the next phase of government's war on thought crimes. Under the guise of public health and safety, this is happening already in the United States because the police is being encouraged and is being empowered to forcibly detain people that they believe might be mentally ill. They want to use in the future computer-based technology in order to identify patient data, such as mental health, substance use, behavioral health information from group homes, shelters, jails, detox facilities, and schools as well. So this is really paving the way to a world that is being led and driven by artificial intelligence where artificial intelligence is seeing you, which I talked about in one of my videos, either as a resource or a threat. And those that are being considered mentally ill will be the ones that will be excluded from society, marginalized, and kind of creating a gulag, the gulag of the society. And the gulag is being described by the historian Anne Applebone as a form of administrative exile. And she says that that administrative exile required no trial and no sentencing procedure, was an ideal punishment not only for troublemakers as such, but also for political opponents of the regime. And let's not forget that totalitarian regimes such as the Soviet Union also declared these people mentally ill. They were considered political prisoners as well, and prisons disguised as psychiatric hospitals where they could be isolated from the rest of the world, from the rest of the society. Their ideas could be discredited and they could be subjected to electric shocks, different drugs and loads of medical procedures in order to break them physically and mentally as well. So now through the use of these red flag laws, behavior, threat assessments and so on and so on, the groundwork is being laid. So this is just showing that we are actually at war. And World War III is already happening. And it's a war of information. And history and the recent history has showed also that we are always at war. There's always some war. There's a war on terror. There's a war on drugs. There's a war on illegal immigration. There's a war on the COVID-19. And all of these programs started out as legitimate responses to pressing concerns and have since become weapons of compliance and control mechanism in the government's hands. Many parts of Europe are facing a surge in new coronavirus infections and hospitalizations. Governments are pushing unvaccinated people to get their shots as soon as possible. Many vaccination skeptics end up here, fighting to breathe in hospital. And the TSA is doubling fines for airline passengers who refuse to mask up. If you break the rules, be prepared to pay. And by the way, show some respect. Our European vaccination days are a touching moment of unity and a European success story. Yeah, success story, my ass. Excuse my French. We all know how that success story ended. And unfortunately, the numbers of the victims of that success story are increasing every single day. So these are the consequences of bad decisions, of listening to government officials that are having the society's best interest at heart. So if we have not learned from this story, then I don't know what else we can learn from. We are moving now towards an authoritarian society. We are moving fast down that slippery slope to an authoritarian world in which the only opinions, ideas, and speech expressed are the ones that are permitted by the government and the corporations as well. At this point in history, the capacity to doubt, to criticize, and to disobey may be all that stands between a future for mankind and the end of civilization.